Here I'm going to show you how to make a reverse find formula in Excel. No VBA, no macros, no funny business, just a formula in the worksheet. Then I'll show you how to combine it with a right function so that you can very easily get so many pieces or so many words from the end of a cell. So two pieces or two words or three words or however many words or pieces you want to get from the end, it'll be much easier with this formula. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. The first thing I'm going to do here is to explain how this new find formula is going to work. So the formula is going to search for something starting from the right of the cell and it will then return the position of what it finds counting from the left of the cell. In this example, I'm looking for the second dash from the right of the cell. So from the right, we start, there's the first dash, there's the second dash, and it returns an eight because it is the eighth character in the cell counting from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this is done by default, counting from the left, because most of Excel's formulas are going to assume that you're going to do it that way. So I have the default formula here that does that, and a little variation of it, which we will use in the right function to get the number of characters from the right of the cell. So I've got both versions of the formula here, here, and here, and I'll explain in depth how they work in a moment. But first, what I want to do is just to show you how to change it to work for your data set. So download the workbook and you can just copy paste the formulas if you want. You don't even have to watch the whole tutorial. And now let us get into this because it's a rather gnarly formula and there are a couple things that you should change to make it work for your situation. So the first thing that you want to do is this little bar character. I've got it here and I've got it here. You want to change that to something that will never appear in your data set. I use this bar character or sometimes the little squiggle character. Use whichever one works for your data set. Make sure it never appears. That is very important because we will use this unique character to actually find the position of what we're looking for. The next thing to change is what you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for dashes. I want to look for the delimiter, the thing that separates the individual pieces of the cell, but this is just what I'm searching for. I'm searching for a dash, so I have a dash right here, and you need to change it in one more place, right here. This two, you'll notice it is in parentheses that are not required. I did that just to sort of highlight it a little bit. You could even put some more parentheses around it to highlight it more, because this is what's going to say, it tells the formula, which occurrence of what I'm searching for would I like to get from the right of the cell. So do I want to look for the first dash, or the second dash, or the third, or the fourth. What do I want to look for? That's what you put in here. So I want to get the second dash, so I have this at a two. So once you get the unique character and what you're searching for sorted, this is all you're going to have to change. So it's two, four, eight. Now let's find the first character from the right, position 10. So that's all you have to do to get the reverse find working for you. And like I said, if you want the variation where it gives you the count from the right, just use this. You can take that big long formula and put it in here where it says B2. Now, if you want to put this in the right function, so this is what I just covered, told you how to change. And all we have here is we do have a len for the cell I count the number of characters in the cell because for the right function, we do need to know how many characters from the right of the cell we would like to return. So this is basically the same as this. The only reason we have plus one here is so we can include the, in this case, delimiter in the count. What does that mean? Well, if I'm getting so many things from the right of the cell, I don't want to include this little separator here. So if I had the plus one over here, I would get an annoying separator, which we do not want. So that's why that's not there. 
So that's what this means, and A2 just references the cell from which we want to get the data. All right, so that's how you change it. You don't have to change anything else in here. You just change what I showed you for the reverse find formula. And you don't need to change what you want to get from the right or the left of the cell because I've already adapted it with this len right here. So change the pipes, change what you're looking for, and which occurrence from the right of the cell you would like to get. If, in this instance, I want the last word, the last item, I make that a one. Now I get the last piece. I want, let's say, the last three pieces. I do a three, I get the last three pieces. It's pretty cool, actually. And this is where the reverse find function really comes into its own. So let's say here I want to get the last word. I just go down here. And you'll notice that the delimiters, what I'm searching for, has been changed here to spaces. But that's all. I want to get the last word, just type a 1. Got the last word. I really, really do like this. The reverse find function in Excel should be a default function. And this is pretty darn cool right here, I have to say. Now it's time to get down and dirty and talk about how this works. I don't really think you need to watch the next part of the tutorial unless you're really curious about how it works. For most of you, just copy-paste this guy, put it into your code, make the changes I told you to make, and you're good to go. But now we're going to do what I call deconstructing formulas. And I had a great little tutorial on five, I think it was five tips to deal with complex formulas in Excel. And I talked about this at the end. If you want a more thorough explanation of how to deconstruct a formula, check out that tutorial. Link should be in the description to this video. And now what we're going to do to deconstruct the formula, since the right function is easy peasy, we're going to deconstruct this guy. And I'm going to show you how it works. So for deconstruction, what we're going to do is move it down here. Let's say maybe down here. And we're going to break it out into all of its little pieces. So the find function is going to search for a unique character. This character is not in this cell. Where do we get it? Well, we use substitute and we put it in there. And we're going to copy them and take them down here. So now we can see what this formula sees. We see our lovely little pipe character right here for the second delimiter, counting from the right of the cell. All right, well, how do we get there? Let's deconstruct it a little bit more. Here we have the text. Here we have what we want to replace. Here we have what we want to replace it with, our unique character. And now the only tricky thing is to figure out which instance of this would we like to replace. So we will take out the next big chunk, go down here, pop that in there. I'd like to replace the third instance. OK, how do I get that? We count the total characters in the cell. This is the process of deconstructing formulas. Yes, it takes a while, but I think that it can be quite helpful. And then we are going to do this. And this right here gets us the total number of delimiters, the total number of things that we are looking for in the cell. So 22 minus 18 is 4. So if I do, let's say this, and go here, minus this, it is 4. But that is not which one we want to work with. Which one do we want to work with? is the second one from the right of the cell. How do we know which one that is? This little magical thing right here. Let's put that in right here, equals this. Now, how do I explain this? I wanted to make it very easy to count from the right, to say I want to get the first thing found from the right of the cell, or the second, or the third. So in order to do that correctly, you have to subtract one. Let's just go through an example here. So there I have the one. And let's do this minus this, OK? So the total number of delimiters here and the delimiter I want to deal with starting from the left of the cell. Because remember, that's how all the formulas are going to work by default, counting from the left. Now, this is the total number of delimiters. If I want to work with the first delimiter counting from the right of the cell, 
here the first space. That is the same number as the total number of delimiters in the cell. So in order for me to be able to put a beautiful, easy to understand one right here, I need to subtract one so that when I'm looking for the first delimiter counting from the right, I only subtract zero from this number because it's the same as the total number of delimiters. When I want to get the second delimiter from the right, that is the same as the third delimiter counting from the left. So I should only subtract one in order to get the correct number. It helps if you work with examples, but it's kind of a confusing topic, yeah, because I'm talking about counting from the right of the cell and the left of the cell and kind of meeting up somewhere in the middle. But at the end of the day, once you've done all this jazz, you get this number here, three, and there's nothing else to it. It's made up of these three pieces right here. That is this, this piece right here, uh, this big piece right here, and this piece right here. So those three pieces combine here to make three. Then we feed that three back into the substitute function. I will go ahead and hit F9 right now so we can calculate this and you'll see that this is what the substitute function sees. It says, hey, go here. Then I want you to find this, which is a space, which can be referred to as a delimiter in this context because it delimits pieces of the cell. And I want you to replace that space or the spaces with a unique character that will never ever be in the cell by default. And this is the magic. This is why we use substitute. I tell it which instance I want to replace. And through all the magic we did down here, we want to replace the third instance counting from the left. Substitute does that. Now we have that goofy pipe right in there. Now we can very easily just use the find function to find what will be the only occurrence of this goofy character. And that's what we do here. We have our substitute. I will hit F9 to calculate that in here. And find sees this. Find this weird pipe in this text. Return the position counting from the left of the cell. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> so by default, the find will give us counting from the left. And as I have previously mentioned, if you would like to get that position from the right, you can use this variation, which is used here in the right function as well. With the len, all you do is get the total number of characters in the cell, subtract that big function, big formula that we just made. And then if you want to include the delimiter, add a one. If you don't, don't. Wow. That's a lot of effort to make a reverse find formula in Excel. Wouldn't it be nice if instead of these stupid search bars and all this other junk they put up here, they could give us a lovely, easy to use reverse find function that would work in all versions of Excel? That would be great. <laughs> so that's it for this tutorial. And I hope you found it helpful and I hope it wasn't too difficult to follow. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.